Hi guys, this is Dr. Ross, and this is the first video lecture in a three-part series on the axial muscles. This is for my class, as well as Dr. Camp's anatomy and physiology class at Lee College. Before we get started, let's just discuss what you should uh, learn from this presentation. You should be able to identify the location, general attachments, and actions of the major skeletal muscles, uh, as well as describe similar actions of uh, or functional groupings of muscles in a particular compartment or region. So let's start with an introduction to facial muscles. Now remember, muscles have an origin and an insertion point. The origin is in, for facial muscles is most often the surface of the skull. The insertion point for most of the facial muscles is going to be the connective tissue of the dermis of the skin, okay? So contraction of these facial muscles because of that is gonna result in movement of the skin to create facial expressions. What is this for? This is largely for non-verbal communication. So over here we're looking at a non-human primate and you can see by all these different facial expressions you can probably get an idea um, which one of these look like happy or sad or angry just like you do with human primates. The first muscles of facial expression that I'd like to discuss are those that move the brows, scalp, and eyes. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is um, several of these muscles in this um, diagram or illustration. And I want to point out what's already present is the epicranial aponeurosis label. What that is, is a tough fibrous sheet of connective tissue that extends over the cranium and it forms a layer of the scalp. Okay, so some of these muscles are going to be inserted there. So the frontalis or frontal belly of the epicranius um, targets the scalp and causes furrowing of the eyebrows. The origin for this muscle is the epicranial aponeurosis itself. And the insertion is going to be underneath the skin of the forehead. And so it's going to move that skin underneath the forehead, causing the brows to furrow. Next is the occipitalis or occipital belly of the um, epicranius. This also targets the skin of the scalp. The origin is the occipital bone and the mastoid process of the temporal bone. The insertion in this case is the epicranial aponeurosis. To move the eyes, we have the obicularis oculi. What this does is closes the eyelids, um, produces winking or blinking or squinting. Sometimes it's referred to as the blink muscle. The origin here is going to be the bones composing the orbit, and the insertion is going to be the skin around the eyelids. So next we're going to talk about the lips and while I'm going to, or muscles that move the lips, and while I'm going to go through them one by one and show them on different parts of the face, due to the fact that this image is showing uh, muscles located at certain depths, I want you to keep in mind that these are paired muscles with the exception of the obicularis oris, which I'm going to start with. So contraction of the muscles I'm going to describe is going to move the lips. Starting with the obicularis oris, this is going to be the muscle that encircles the lips. There's only one. It's not going to be a paired muscle. It shapes the lips during speech, um, and it can move them in multiple directions. The origin is the tissue surrounding the lips. The insertion is underneath the skin at the corners of the mouth. The zygomaticus major muscle is sometimes referred to as the smiling muscle. As you can see where it ends, it's right there at the corner of the mouth. So when this pulls, it pulls, when it contracts, it pulls at the corner of the mouth. Um, the origin is the zygomatic bone. The insertion is underneath the skin right there at the corner of the mouth. Many muscles are going to have an insertion point right here. Uh, again, there's going to be a zygomaticus major on both sides of the face. The zygomaticus minor, uh, this is going to elevate the upper lip, exposing the teeth. You can see that it's moved slightly uh, medial to the zygomaticus major. Okay, so it's pulling on. When it contracts, it's pulling on a slightly different portion of the lip. So it exposes the teeth. The origin is the zygomatic bone. The insertion is the skin of the upper lip. 
the buccinator or buccinator. Uh, so if you remember your anatomical regions, this is going to come in handy because this is located right in that anatomical region. So the buccinator, when it contracts, it causes lateral movement because you can see where it intersects there, the corner of the mouth. As that contracts, it's going to cause lateral movement of the cheeks. Sometimes this is referred to as, uh, uh, this is what's going to cause whistling or the sucking motion. The origin is the uh, processes of the maxilla and mandible as well as the sphenoid bone. Uh, and the insertion is right there at the orbicularis oris near the corner of the mouth. Next we have the levitator labii superiosus. Uh, this is where the muscles to me start to sound like you're on Harry Potter. So the levitator labii superiosus, right? Okay. Yes, I'm a dork. All right, so uh, this is going to move the upper lip. If you look at where this one intersects, it's also going to move that upper lip area. Sometimes this uh, furrows the lip in a way that makes that Elvis snarl. So if you guys have seen a picture of Elvis, he always has that one side up. But again, this muscle, just like the other ones I mentioned, are going to be paired on both sides of the face. The origin is going to, again, be the zygomatic bone. Insertion is the skin and muscle of the upper lip. And then finally, on this image, we have the levitator anguli oris. There's just a small portion of this muscle showing on this image. Um, this is going to elevate the angle of the mouth media, um, medially. The origin is the maxilla, uh, and the insertion is under the skin at the superior corner of the mouth, which you don't really see in this image. So I implore you to maybe go look at some other images of this particular muscle. All right, so moving on to the final set of muscles. So these are going to move the lower lip. Those other muscles move the corners of the mouth or the upper lip when they contracted. Now we're going to talk about the lower lip. So first, we're going to start with the depressor anguli oris. Again, these are going to be paired. This is going to move the lower lip. Um, it's going to open the mouth and slide uh, when, when, when you're kind of sliding your jaw left and right. Um, it can help with sliding the jaw as well. The origin's the mandible, and the insertion is underneath the skin at the in inferior corner of the mouth. Next, you have the depressor labii inferiosus. This moves the lower lip as well. The origin here, again, is the mandible, and the insertion is the skin of the lower lip. The last one here is the mentalis. Again, we are looking at a muscle named after an anatomical region. This is going to protrude the, uh, the lower lip, and uh, in combination with the orbicularis oris, it can create a pout. Uh, when it contracts, it also wrinkles the chin. The origin is your center mandible, and the insertion <clears throat> is the skin under the lip. So here we have some images showing um, different facial expressions of a human this time, and I'm just going to list some of the muscle, the muscles or the major muscles that are being contracted to create these facial expressions. So here we have the depressor anguli oris, it's causing a frown. Here is the obicularis oculi, blinking or closing the eyes. The zygomaticus major, which is causing a smile. The obicularis oris, and this is closing the mouth or making a kissy face. Um, and then here you have contraction of the frontal belly, uh, and this is causing wrinkling of the forehead and raising of the eyebrows. All right, so now let's move on to muscles that move the lower jaw. These are muscles that are going to be involved in mastication. What in the world does that mean? It is the way we describe the process of chewing in anatomy and physiology. And you're going to be hearing a lot more about that in anatomy and physiology too. These muscles move the mandible, and they have to exert enough pressure to actually bite through your food and chew your food before it is swallowed. The temporalis muscle is, when it contracts, is going to close the mouth. It elevates and retracts the mandible. The origin is the temporal bone, which you can see in this illustration. Um, and the insertion is the coronary process of the mandible. Uh, we can't see the insertion in this image because it would cover up the next muscle I'm going to talk about, which is the masseter. 
The masseter closes the mouth, so when it contracts, it's going to close the mouth as well. It aids in chewing. It also elevates and protracts the mandible, and it's the agonist of mandible elevation. The origin of this muscle is the zygomatic arch, which you can see, and the insertion is the ramus, which is sort of that, that smooth area toward the back of the jaw, um, that lateral surface of the mandible. Next, we're going to move on to muscles of the anterior neck. Um, so the anterior muscles of the neck facilitate swallowing, um, and the way we refer to swallowing in anatomy and physiology is deglutition. These muscles also uh, facilitate speech. So there's a group called the supra hyoid muscles and they originate from above the hyoid bone um, in the chin region. So I'm going to describe three of these four muscles. Um, basically this group raises the hyoid bone, the floor of the mouth, and the larynx during deglutition. So first, let's start with the digastric. The digastric muscle has two bellies. That's where you get di. Um, you have the anterior belly and the posterior belly. Um, these muscles, when they contract, are going to elevate the hyoid. They're also invol involved in extreme opening of the mouth, like when you're yawning or taking a bite of a large apple. The origin is the mandible, as well as the mastoid process. And the insertion is the hyoid bone via the, the uh, via this thing called a fascial fascia sling, uh, which you can see a little bit in this image. This is just connective tissue. Um, next, you have the mylohyoid. This also elevates the hyoid bone and it tenses the floor of the mouth. The origin's the mandible, and the insertion is the hyoid bone. You also have the geniohyoid. This elevates the hyoid bone as well. The origin here is going to be the mandible also, and the, um, <clears throat> the insertion is going to be the hyoid bone. Uh, again, I want to point out that these muscles are located on, uh, these are paired muscles. Uh, you're just only seeing them um, in, in one side of the image due to the fact that these muscles are layered on top of each other. And that is it for the muscles of the, um, the, the facial muscles and the neck muscles.